Hi friends and welcome. Today we're talking about ChatGPT plugins, which is a fairly new feature that lets you get real-time information from the plugin provider. So for example, if I'm just here in regular ChatGPT land and I ask a question like, what's the current price for Tesla stock? Basically it says, dude, I can't tell you that. I don't have real-time data or the ability to browse the internet. With a plugin though, I'll start a new chat. For this, you do need to be using GPT-4. So if you have the plus type of an account, this should be available to you. And then come into plugins. This is the plugin that I created here without a logo at the moment, but it's still working. So we could ask that same question. What's the current price of Tesla stock? This is going to use my plugin, which is calling an external API to get this information. And here's real time up to date information, everything I could possibly want to know about Tesla stock today. So coming up in this video, we're going to build this plugin together completely from scratch and see how to get things working. Now, just a couple of caveats and potential gotchas before we get started. If we come back to the new chat, I mentioned you do need the GPT-4 access, which you should have with the plus account. This will let you use plugins. So if I were to come into the plugin store here, you'll see there's various plugins here available and I could install and use any of these. For example, I've installed the kayak plugin and I've looked up some travel information. There's a few other things here as well. So that should work for using the plugins. If you want to develop them though, currently there's a waitlist. So if you come up here to openai.com slash waitlist slash plugins, you'll need to get on this list. It's a little bit confusing here that it says they're available with no waitlist required. That means you can just use them like I just mentioned. But if you want to actually develop for them, you do need to sign up on this list. I've been on the list for about two weeks and I just got access today. So I guess that's a bit of my disclaimer as well. I'm still figuring things out. I've only been playing with this for a few hours, but I'm going to show you what I've learned. So let's get started. So when we're in ChatGPT and we say, what's the current price of Tesla stock? We've told it to use the plugin. The plugin is basically three things. It's an app that does something. In our case, the app is going to retrieve stock information. It needs to be wrapped in an API at a publicly accessible URL. We also need a manifest file called AI plugin.json, and that contains the plugin metadata. So the name, the logo, the authentication type, and so on. And then we need another file, the open API specification. This is a YAML file that basically tells ChatGPT what your API does and how to interact with it. So these are the three big steps that we're going to go through together. Let's dig into step number one here, an app that does something wrapped in an API at a URL that ChatGPT can get to. So for the app, this is going to retrieve information for the stock symbol. So Tesla, Microsoft, whatever it is, we're going to get price, volume, and a bunch of other information. We're going to use an external API for this. There's lots of APIs out there that serve up stock information. We're going to be using Alpha Vantage, which is totally free. And we're going to do all of this using Flask, which is a really lightweight framework to create Python web apps and APIs. Super simple. All of the code for this is available. So don't panic if you don't know Flask or Python or you're not big into coding. No problem. So that's an overview of the app. What you're going to need to follow along you're going to need an API key for Alpha Vantage. So let's head out there and take a look at what we need. This is at alphavantage.co slash documentation. There are several different APIs you can use here. The one we're going to be using is called quote endpoint. You'll see the different parameters here that we'll work with, but one that's required is the API key. So you can claim your key. It's totally free. Just come in here, fill out this information, and then get your key. All right, the next thing you need is somewhere to write code and to run a Flask API basically as you develop it. So somewhere to locally test it. I'm going to be using Replit because it's super, super simple. It's free to create an account and we can run it locally and test things out. If you're more comfortable in another IDE, a cloud-based IDE or something local running a web server, then go for it. Just basically, you need some way to run this API and test that it's working. And then you also need somewhere to host the API at a publicly accessible URL because ChatGPT needs to get to it. I'm also going to use Replit for this. 
It's kind of an all-in-one solution. You can run it locally, and then you can easily deploy it on a public endpoint. But there's plenty of other options here as well, so feel free to do one that works best for you. If you are using one of these other tools, just know that your steps and your configuration and maybe your port numbers and whatnot will be a little bit different. So I'll just assume that you know what you're doing there. If you want to follow along in Replit, though, it's really easy to get started. So let's go get started. This is replit.com. If you don't have an account, it's free and easy to create one. So go ahead and set that up if you want to follow along. And then we want to create a new REPL, which is basically a project. So create REPL. Now I have three code files that are out in GitHub. That's going to be the easiest way to get started with these. So just import. If for some reason, though, you want to start from scratch and copy and paste code or start your own project, then just type in Flask here to get that template that will set up the appropriate files and dependencies and whatnot, and you should be good to go. But let's import from GitHub. I'll just grab the files that I've already uploaded out there. This link is in the description as well, but it's tiny technical tutorials slash chat plugins.get. If you paste that in, it'll shorten the URL here. It detects that this is using Python, which is correct. And then we just say import from GitHub. All right, then we need to say what our entry point is, the file that's run by default, which is going to be main.py. And then we can say done. And now let's go through these code files. So we've got main.py. Again, that's our default. So up on top, starting with some import statements. And then we do need the API key here. You'll want to use your API key. I'm going to paste mine in, and then I will delete it once this video is over. Obviously, it is not a best practice to hard code stuff into your code like this. Replit, if you're using it, does have a secrets tool here where you could set up a key value pair for this and then reference this in the code instead of hard coding it. So retrieving secrets this way is a best practice, whether you're using Replit or something else. But just so we don't get bogged down in that, I am going to hard code this for now. And then our base URL, this is the Alpha Vantage URL. Remember back to our documentation here, we've got some examples of how to call this thing, which is alphavantage.co slash query. So that's what we're going to be calling from our code. Then we initialize the Flask app here. And then we basically have these four routes defined here. In Flask, they start with the at app dot route decorator and they'll route to the appropriate function to handle the request. So if a request comes in just to the root of the site, to index basically, just the slash, then we're just going to return hello world, your web application is working. This one's not actually necessary for ChatGPT plugins. It's just a nice way for us to test and make sure that things are working at all once we do our deployment. We've got one here for slash stock. This is the most interesting for our plugin. When a request comes in, there's going to be a symbol passed in, like Tesla or Microsoft or what have you for the stock symbol. We're going to grab that out of the request, bundle it up into this dictionary down here of key value pairs. So symbol, we've got the function. The function name is coming from our quote endpoint. It's actually called global underscore quote. That's where I'm getting that from. And then we'll load the API key as well into those parameters. We'll send all of this off to the base URL, which again is alpha vantage, passing in the parameters. And then we'll output the response, which is going to be JSON. So this is the meat of what we're doing here with our very simple API. And then we've got a couple things down here just to let ChatGPT know where to find these extra files. So there's two files that are super important. You'll see them over here on the left. We've got AI plugin.json. This one, ChatGPT is going to look for this under a folder called dot well known. So it'll make a call out to our plugin looking for this file in this folder. And when it makes that request, we can basically say send from directory, go grab this file here. You'll notice that I don't actually have it in a folder here in the project structure, and I don't need to. That's basically what the route is handling. And then down here, we've got a similar setup for openapi.yaml. This one doesn't need to be in a folder. It should just be at the root of your API. And then we're going to send the openapi.yaml file right here. 
And then finally, actually running the app. If you are using something other than Replit, you might need to check your port number here to make sure things will run locally. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the JSON file here. And I'll just rearrange things a little. There we go. So this is basically the metadata for your plugin. The version, the name, the description, your auth type. We're just going to go with none for now. The type of API, where your API spec lives. So this is the openapi.yaml file that we reference. We will need to come in here and fill in the domain once we have it. You can also choose to upload a logo. If you are going to eventually get this validated by OpenAI and release it to the public and go through the review process, these need to be valid here, but I'm just going to leave those for now. And then looking at the openapi.yaml file, this basically tells ChatGPT what the API does and how to interact with it. So up here at top, we've got OpenAPI 3.0.1. This is the version that's currently in the documentation on their site, so that's why I'm using that number. Title, description, version, we will need to update this with a URL once we have it. And then basically this part is going to match up with this here. So what parameters do we need to send in? What's the schema type? It's a string, the description, and so on. I've given an example here of what we're looking for with the input, with the stock symbol, and then the response. And then I've included a couple reference slides here, just in case you want to refer back to these later. These are the files that we just went through, so the manifest file. Make sure you've got that route to the well-known folder. Also highlighting the different domains that you'll need to update here once we get to that point. And then the openapi.yaml as well, just a reference for you here. Okay, so let's test this out locally and see if it works. Really easy to do that here in Replit. Just click on the Run button. When you do this, you'll see some Packager files appearing on the left here. Really nice that it gives you everything that you need, all the different dependencies, resolves those for you. And then right here, you should get this web view that's kind of embedded in the screen, which is a nice way to tell if things are working. However, I have noticed that sometimes there seems to be something loading here. You'll notice the spinning circle up there on top that I think keeps something from loading. So if you ever run into this, one thing you can try is just pop this into a new tab, and everything is working here. So it's working locally, at least to the root of the site. So that is just this being called right here. We haven't done anything with stock. So let's try routing to this one to see if we actually get some stock information. So what we need to do is slash stock. And then if we come out to the documentation again, here's an example of what to pass in. So rather than saying slash query, we're doing slash stock so that our route will work. The function, which is for this one right here, the quote endpoint, I've actually got that hard-coded in my code as well, but it is required to pass it in. The symbol, which will be our stock, like Tesla or IBM, and then the API key. So let me update this. So function equals global quote, symbol will pass in Tesla, and then for API key, you can just pass in demo here. That will be replaced in our code with the actual API key that I hard-coded in there. So let's hit enter and see what we get. And voila, there's our JSON code coming back. We've got Tesla as the stock and various numbers here about the price. Yay! Okay, making progress. And you'll see that that finally stopped loading and it's showing here. So just a potential gotcha there to know about. So we've got the functionality working locally. Now we need to deploy this out to the world so that we have a public endpoint that ChatGPT can get to. Super easy to do that from here in Replit. Just come up here to your plugin, the little drop down, and then we'll say deploy your project. And then over here on the right, you can choose the resources that you need. For what we're doing, this is super simple. You can go with the bare minimum here. This will also change the pricing. 
So everything you've done up to now is totally free. If you do want to host this on a public endpoint though, you do have to pay some money. It's not a ton, it's going to be 20 cents per day for this one. If it's the very first time you're deploying something, I believe there's a minimum of $1.50 if I recall correctly. So it'll cost you a little bit. I will show you how to tear this down at the end. If you're using other hosting services out there, that's totally fine as well. But that's what we're going to do here. Purchase and deploy this. And then we'll say deploy your project. But very importantly, you'll remember that in the JSON and YAML files, we needed to update our domain name. And that's what we get right here. So I'm actually going to update this to ChatGPT plugins TTT for tiny technical tutorials. So that will be ChatGPT plugins TTT dot replit dot app. And before we actually go deploy, we need to update that in our files. So let me copy this. We'll come into the openai.yaml file. Now this does have to be HTTPS, which we'll get once we deploy it. So HTTPS, ChatGPT plugins TTT dot replit dot app. Yours will obviously be different, but that's all we need to replace in this file. And then if we come into the AI plugin.json file, a couple things to replace in here. This right here, so domain slash openapi.yaml. For the logo, I haven't actually uploaded a logo, but if you wanted to put your own, just update your domain name. And even if you don't have a logo, you can still add your plugin. It'll just show a broken image for the logo like I currently have. And then for these, you can just leave these with example for now. But again, if you do want to get these verified and published to the world, eventually, you will need to have a valid contact and legal info URL. Okay, I think we hit everything. We've updated it here. No updates needed in our main.py file. So we should be good to deploy. Let's make sure we don't need to add anything else. You can add environment variables if you need to for your own plugins. We don't have that though. We're just going to say deploy. This will take a minute or two, so I'm going to pause the video and be back when it's done. And success. Excellent. So if you scroll up, there's a handy link here to pop this out in a new tab. And this is the public version that ChatGPT should be able to get to. And we get the hello world. Everything's looking good. If we paste in the same slash stock information here just to test it out, everything is good there. We're getting our JSON code back for Tesla. OK, so we've got everything working. Now we just need to go into the ChatGPT interface and basically point ChatGPT to our plugin. So over here under GPT-4, click on Plugins. And then here in the drop-down, Plugin Store. I'm actually going to uninstall the one that I had installed previously. This is the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video, so uninstalling is easy. There we go. And then to hook up the new one that we just created, come down here to Develop Your Own Plugin. If you don't see this link, that means you don't have access to the APIs for plugins. So make sure you get on this waitlist here if you're not already. And once you're given access, then this link will magically appear for you. So develop your own plugin. And then we need to enter our domain. So let me go grab that again. It was this one right here, replit.app. Enter that. And so it's going to go find our manifest file, as well as the open API spec. So remembering back to our code, it just went and hit this route right here, looking for the AI-plugin. And it also hit this, openapi.yaml. And that's why we have this code here, so ChatGPT knows where to find those. OK, looking good. I don't have a logo. That's why we're getting the broken image, but that would be easy to add. So this is an unverified plugin, meaning OpenAI doesn't do any sort of review or approval on it. I can just install for me and up to 15 developers. So yes, again, this is unverified. Bad things could happen, but let's install. 
Okay, and then the unverified obviously with the red icon here, but let's see if we can get some Tesla information. The moment of truth. So it's going out, it's using our plugin. It's going to get that information and then bring it back in a nice human friendly response like ChatGPT does. A summary of the day's trading and format it in a table. Incidentally, that table formatting, I forgot to point out, that was in our AI dash plugin. I said always display results using markdown tables. You could say display results as a bullet point list or something like that, but that's where that's coming from. And it looks like it's working. So congratulations, you've built your first plugin. Very simple, but hopefully that helped you put the pieces together. Now, as far as what's next, if you come out to the documentation, at OpenAI, there's a lot more here. So you can go through the getting started, more about authentication. We just use authentication type none, but in the real world, you'd probably want something. And then there's additional examples here, information about using these in production, and then the review process. So if you do want your plugin to be out there for the world and approved, you'll need to go through this process. I have not done this, so I can't speak too much to it, but go through the documentation. And then lastly, before you leave me, let me show you how to shut down your deployment out here in Replit so you don't run up a huge bill. Over here on the right, under Deployments, if you click on Settings, and then scroll down, Shut Down, you'll see here your hosting subscription will be canceled and the app will cease to exist. So if you shut it down, obviously your plugin will not work anymore, but it'll stop the charges. So let's shut down, delete my deployment, and you should be good to go. There's no charge associated with just having code in your REPL here. It's just the deployment. All right, that does it for me. If you found this helpful, give me a big thumbs up on the video and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.